In this video, I'm just going to briefly mention some of the things we can see with a syndrome of dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere. Left cerebral hemisphere, at least in most people, left cerebral hemisphere syndrome. So symptoms and signs we could see with dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere. So let's say when we're looking at this person from the front, this left cerebral hemisphere the left side of the cerebrum has some sort of abnormality and it's not functioning properly. One of the abnormalities we may see involves dysfunction of upper motor neurons to the right side of the body. So that's weakness and or the other upper motor neuron signs, spasticity, hyperreflexia, clonus, and the plant extensor plantar response. And the reason for that is that the upper motor neurons start way up here in the left cerebral hemisphere for the right side of the body primarily. So let me just show that in this illustration of the central nervous system from the front. So if we have some somas of upper motor neurons, and here'd be part of the cortical bulbar tract going to lower motor neurons in the brainstem. Now we'll also have upper motor neurons that are going to be part of the corticospinal tract going down to lower motor neurons on the other side of the spinal cord. and they all cross over to the other side. There's a little bit more going on with the brainstem, but don't worry about that for right now. Most of these are gonna end up on the other side, particularly for the lower motor neurons in the spinal cord going out to the limbs. So that with a lesion of any of these upper motor neurons in the left cerebral hemisphere, we can see weakness and or the upper motor neuron signs on the right side of the body on the other side. Now, part of that abnormality often involves slurred speech so the speech may be slurred, and that's from dysfunction of these upper motor neurons going to lower motor neurons that are controlling all the muscles of speech, such as the muscles of the lips that move the lips to help make certain consonant sounds. We will often also see somatosensory abnormalities, usually of all modalities, of the right side of the body, the other side of the body. And the reason for that is because all that somatosensory information coming in from the right side of the body to the spinal cord and the brainstem is going to travel up through a few different pathways to get up to the cerebrum. But once it gets up there, it's going to be crossed over and it's all going to be coming over to the other side of the cerebrum to the other cerebral hemisphere. So that pretty much all of the somatosensory information from the right side of the body is coming over to the left cerebral hemisphere to an area right around here, but don't worry about exactly where this is now. So that's an area that has a lot to do with somatosensation, somatosensation, right there-ish. So a lesion of that area, or, or these axons as they're passing through the left cerebral hemisphere can cause somatosensory abnormalities of the right side of the body. Oh, I forgot to label these upper motor neurons too. Here, let me write that in, upper motor neurons. So the upper motor neurons and the somatosensory tracts are similar in that they start and finish on other sides of the body and the brain. So the ones that involve the left cerebral hemisphere generally involve the right side of the body. And the same is true for another one of the senses, which is vision. So let me just draw a big kind of semicircle here to represent vision to the right side. And with dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere, we often see abnormal or lost vision off to the right side. And we can go into the pathway of that in later videos, but the gist is that that visual information from the right side ends up coming over into the left cerebral hemisphere to an area in the back here. And don't worry exactly about where the area is, but this is where, where visual information ends up. Visual information on the other side of the brain from the actual light that's coming in from the other side of the body. So that with dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere or the specific parts that involve vision, we can see loss or abnormalities of vision to the other side, to the right side. Another thing we often see with dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere is abnormal language. Abnormal language. And language is actually kind of a bigger category than just speech because it also involves written language and other types of communication that use words. And so in addition to slurred speech, when a person's speaking or writing or using other methods to communicate words, there may be abnormalities of, of 
producing language, you're kind of turning thoughts into words, or there may be abnormalities of understanding language, whether it's spoken words or written words that a person's trying to read. And the reason for that is that there are some areas that are in most people over in the left cerebral cortex in a few different parts of the brain that play a big role in our ability to use language to turn our thoughts into words and turn words into thoughts. And with dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere or these, these areas that involve language, we can see abnormal language. There's actually a term for that, and that term is aphasia. Aphasia means abnormal language. Now, we often don't see very obvious abnormalities of the other senses with a problem of just one cerebral hemisphere, because most of the other senses seem to send information to both sides of the brain, at least in most people, so that there often isn't a very obvious problem with those other senses if one cerebral hemisphere is still functioning properly. But because the upper motor neurons and the somatosensory pathways and the visual pathways all usually cross over the majority or all of it from one cerebral hemisphere to the other side of the body, we often see big abnormalities of those. And because most people have their language cortices in the left hemisphere with dysfunction of the left cerebral hemisphere, we often see aphasia or abnormal language. So those are kind of the big ticket items for the syndrome of left cerebral hemisphere dysfunction. But it can get more complicated than that because there are a number of other things going on in the cerebral hemisphere. And we can get these partial lesions where just part of the cerebral hemisphere is involved instead of the entire cerebral hemisphere. So there's some variations on this, this these general ideas.